and welcome to Focus on Western. Well, the 4,000 miles from West Germany to Bowling Green has been shortened for two television reporters who found the two countries aren't too much different when it comes to gathering news. A typical day, if there is such a thing, for an American news reporter might mean covering a press conference of a visiting official from some foreign country. And the same could be said for a foreign news correspondent. But for WBKO Television's Barbara Dubzak and West German television reporter Claudia Brockman, that press conference was one in which they were on the receiving end of reporters' questions instead of the asking position. Both reporters are part of an exchange program sponsored by the U.S. Information Agency and the Association of Schools of Mass Communication and Journalism. And while for the most part, journalists from the two countries don't differ too much, Brockman says the route to becoming one might. Well, one basic difference is also the, the education of journalists, to how to be a journalist, right? Uh, right now, the prerequisites become higher and higher, so now you have to have a college degree, and after studying some certain field, you go for an internship, and then you would stay as a trainee for one year and a half with a television station or a radio station or a newspaper. The experience for Brockman has been just as rewarding, according to the West German reporter, who spent a year in California at California State University at Chico about 10 years ago, so the American system wasn't too difficult to adapt to this time around. As for either reporter wanting to make the other country home for a while, it has some positive possibilities. I think this would be this would be the ultimate goal, you know, but um, we sh we should have to work on that. <laughs> Brockman will head back to her native country in early October. A Western Kentucky University graduate has been recognized as the Sigma Nu Man of the Year. A. Franklin Brown III received the national award, the highest presented by the international fraternity in competition involving all of the organization's chapters. Brown served as chapter president during his years at Western Kentucky and was an honor graduate in speech communication and broadcasting and had a four-year scholarship while here. He was selected as Sigma News chapter scholar three consecutive years and had the highest grade point average among fraternity men while at Western. He also won the Greek Scholar of the Year Award his senior year. He accepted a teaching assistant offer from Purdue University where he teaches three sections of basic communication to undergraduates. Brown is a native of Liberty, Kentucky. Exchanging ideas and problems is a basic part of a college or university, and that's exactly what a weekend conference of black student leaders was all about recently. About 90 representatives from 11 different schools attended to hear from educational and professional leaders. This particular conference is a conference where uh, black student leaders from various organizations come and meet and it gives them an opportunity to go through various leadership sessions. It gives them a chance to network with various students from other campuses and it also gives them a chance to talk with and, and uh, socialize with the advisors from these various uh, other campuses. The Black Alliance Leadership Conference began in 1982 as a result of a Martin Luther King Jr. Conference held at Northern Kentucky University. This was the fourth annual conference. Western President Dr. Kurt Alexander was recently honored as he was made an honorary business associate by the Hilltopper chapter of the American Business Women's Association. The presentation was made during National ABWA Day hosted by the Western chapter and Alexander received a plaque from Hilltopper 86 President Linda Powers. Alexander spoke to the group earlier this year acknowledging that organization's support of Western through the awarding of scholarships. Western senior Linda Morales from Bowling Green was also presented a $500 scholarship during the program with Alexander. Well, two Western Kentucky programs have received grants from different organizations recently. A $150,000 award has been received by the Gerontology Program here from the Department of Health and Human Services. The funds will be used to help develop a multimedia dissemination system which will provide those involved with the care of elderly current information on various subjects dealing with care of elderly. Faculty from a number of colleges will deliver 100 programs using videotape, teleconferencing, and other modes from the project entitled Technology for Dissemination to Caregivers. A second grant has been received by Western's Talent Search Project from the U.S. Department of Education. The grant for $97,432 will be used as part of a program 
which serves more than 700 potential high school students and first-generation college students from a 10-county area. The project is directed by Susan Adams and encourages high school comp completion and college enrollment. Airbrushing, computer mapping, tornado tracking, and robots. They were all demonstrated at a recent science fair for high school students on campus here. Abigail Baker has more in this report. Have you ever seen a fistulated cow? Hard to say, right, because you don't really know what one is. Well, area high school juniors and seniors had the chance to see a fistulated cow plus much more at the 12th annual Hilltopper Days. The two-day science exhibition featured everything from dental hygiene to meteorology. Hilltopper Days is organized to introduce high school students to all the science-related fields available to them at Western Kentucky. This year's exhibition drew students from over 40 schools in Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee, and attendance was more than 2,500, an increase of 500 from last year's fair. I think, so. I think the space program has sparked a lot of interest in science, and um, I think with all the emphasis on industry has created a lot of interest in technical careers, in engineering tech and industrial tech. And um, there seems to be uh, an interest on the part of students in specific uh, career-oriented fields to get into in college uh, more than there used to be. It's nearing the end of this report and some of you still have one unanswered question. What is a fistulated cow? In this case, it's a cow with a surgically implanted observation window. For Focus on Western, I'm Abigail Baker. A Western Kentucky University graduate will be the guest speaker at the annual L.Y. Lancaster Lecture Thursday, October 23rd. Dr. James H. Clark, professor of cell biology at Baylor College of Medicine, will return to his alma mater for the program. He graduated from Western with honors and went on to complete his MS and PhD programs at Purdue University. He has served as principal investigator for more than one half million, rather two and one half million dollars in research grants dealing primarily with estrogen. He has also lectured extensively at university and scientific meetings and was recently elected president of the Laurentian Hormone Conference Incorporated, one of the most important meetings in endocrinology. The L.Y. Lancaster Lecture Series is named in honor of the founder of Western's pre-med program and annually brings an outstanding lecturer to Western's campus. The October 23rd lecture will be open to the public. Well, in some events coming up at Western, High School Press Day will be hosted by Western's Department of Journalism Friday, October 10th. The program is for high school students interested in the field of journalism and photojournalism. For more information, call Western at 745 26 5-3. The Bowling Green Western Symphony Orchestra will perform in concert Saturday, October 11th at 8 p.m. in Van Meter Auditorium. Gary Dilworth is the director of the orchestra.